we got one more guest here for this Thursday edition of Bang the Book Radio. That is professional handicapper Tony George from Doc Sports. Tony, how's it going today, man? Good. Just finishing up my NFL card today. They they post at 5 o'clock Central on Thursday, so finishing up uh, a, a good NFL card this weekend and off a strong week last week, 4-1 uh, and one week in the NFL on the wild card weekend, so been kind of concentrated on that here the last couple of days. So, uh, but just staying busy, you know. We got conference action fired up here in college hoops and uh, NBA rolling along and starting to take a look at some Major League Baseball uh, over the weekend. Going to start start in here on Saturday with that. So, uh, got a full slate of uh, work to do on a daily basis and been busy. Yeah, you had an excellent uh, Major League Baseball season last year. And, of course, you know, baseball now with season win totals up at Caesars Palace. And it's the ink is barely dry turning the calendar over to 2019. But we've already got MLB season win totals out. And, Tony, we'll talk some more about baseball as we go throughout uh, the late winter and on into early spring here on the show. But you mentioned finishing up your NFL card and finished up the college football season on Monday night with the national championship game. I've been asking all of my guests this, so today's your lucky day, Tony. In terms of looking back at your college football season, what do you feel like something, you know, what do you feel like was really successful for you, whether it's something new that you did or something that you've always done? Well, I took a, I took a, a lot, uh, I, I took a lot of home dogs this year, which was successful. I did not have a great college football season a full transparency I tell it like it is I'm one of those guys uh, but I, I found some success with home underdogs this year in certain spots I should have taken more and a couple other things I did too um, with uh, good teams against weak sisters so to speak was um, I and I'm going to do more of it next year and that's going to be halftime lines, you know, especially a team laying 14 or 17 that clearly could win by three or four touchdowns. You could catch them on halftime lines around, you know, seven, eight, eight and a half points. And, and I was successful there. What I was unsuccessful with when I was laying points, much like I guess, I guess the perfect example would be the Ohio State game. You have teams that are clearly dominating another team, and for one reason or another, whether it's coaching, player attitudes, um, the other coach at halftime that's down in the scoreboard making halftime adjustments, and uh, you have the team that's laying a big number gets complacent. You know, and they let them back in the game, they lose momentum. And uh, I had a lot of bad beats this year a lot probably more bad beats than I've ever had in my life culminated with Ohio State Um, but you know late in the game and you know if I looked at those halftime lines I went back and looked at those games that I lost where I laid you know double digits which is something I really don't like to do a lot but I I did on numerous occasions this year and 92 percent of the games that I lost all covered the first half line so that's something I'm going to take a look at next year. And, and uh, you know, from a power rating perspective, you know, everything's going to remain the same, offensive and defensive efficiency, points per play, yards per possession, you know, all those, all those standard key elements that, that we uh, use to, to crunch a number to come up with a power rating for teams. I'm really not going to make any adjustments there. I think I'm just going to adjust a little bit on how I wager these games and, you know, the one thing hopefully that we're going to be able to have in place next year at Doc Sports is in-game wagering, which, which to this day, you know, is growing in popularity. Um, there's still a lot of advantages. I'm sure the books are going to get a lot sharper with some of the things they do in terms of how they're posting their lines. But, you know, it, it, it's a lot easier, you know, to watch the first half of a game and say, you know, Duke's not going to show up today or this isn't, it's going to be more of the same or, or, or whatever – the case might be hopefully we're going to have what we call a text alert system over there where we can text clients you know not every game but say you know four or five games a weekend you know on saturday and maybe a couple on sunday you sign up for a weekend package and we can text out right at halftime maybe some halftime lines or some prop bets in second halves that you can recover some of your money on because uh if if it's going south on you up front you know there's ways to 
to, to bet back into something to hedge, so to speak, and then and pick yourself up some money. And um, hopefully we'll have that system in place next year to do that. That's, that's one thing I'm also going to look at for next season, Adam. Well, that's incredible to think that, you know, you would have done so well on the first halves and games that you lost because of, you know, whatever the case may be, prevent defense or, you know, team kind of packing it in for the game, something like that. So it's interesting because as somebody who sells premium selections, you know, because a lot of these sites don't track first half, second half, any derivative plays, stuff like that, it's hard on you because you can't put something out like that and say, hey, play the first half. Obviously, from a personal handicapping and personal bankroll standpoint, you can. So I know you're already a really selective type of guy. You adopt that less is more approach. So I think it's going to be an interesting uh, you know, balance for you next year of knowing that with your personal bankroll, you want to play first halves, knowing that not all clients can play derivatives or knowing that for tracking purposes, you have to play the full game. Yeah, um, but these, you know, I, I hate to talk about offshore books because, frankly, they're illegal um, in, in, a, in, in a roundabout way. You know, that, that's, that, that's a gray area you can argue all day long. And, uh, but sports betting is becoming more and more legal and here throughout the United States with various states, with 16 or 17 states with legislation. looks like they're all going to pass, and some already have. But so you're going to have more options from your outlets. But most of the offshores do have first half line betting, you know. And I know that, you know, I, I don't want to mention any names. I, I, you know, I just don't want to mention any names. But there are plenty of books that offer it. You know, I've been, and the one thing I've done this year in the NBA with great success, I think I hit. Don't quote me, but I'm I'm relatively sure four out of my last five uh, NBA uh, hit a couple this week. I, I was betting the, the half the halftime lines and you know we have some decent sales volume over at docs and and to this day putting out those halftime lines i have not had one email into customer service saying i can't place that wager and uh so you know there's more options available to you a lot most of these offshores and most of these in any type of book in the united states you know that has an app you know i don't know if like you know on the east coast FanDuel's real big out there whatever whether they have an app in a geolocation app, if you're in the state of New Jersey or whatever, you can wager a half timeline or what have it. But but they're becoming more and more available. And with more sports betting legalization, you know, across the board in the United States, uh, these books are going to offer more and more options to get players to put action down on games, including, you know, in-game props and half timelines, first half lines, Adam. All right, so let's transition over to basketball here because, as I mentioned in the previous segment, we've only got seven NFL games left to go. College football's done. So I want to ask you just in general here, Tony, at this time of the year, you know, people can't bet college football anymore. The NFL, they're still betting on the weekend, but it's going to bring more money into the NBA and the college basketball betting markets. So does that change anything for you from a handicapping standpoint? Not really. I'm doing the same thing I've always done. You know, I mean, I'm unlike Joe Blow. I just don't switch. I don't switch gears to college basketball when, you know, um, when that when Clemson beat Alabama. Then we start in. I've been doing it since, you know, pretty much looking at it since October, and going along here. The the one thing I think is a little bit different is two seasons in college basketball. There's three seasons in college basketball. There's non-conference schedule games, then there's conference schedule games, conference action, and then there's postseason. You know, and you adjust. It's, it's different handicapping uh, for all three of those seasons in one season. So you approach games a little bit differently. Um, so right now, we're in the learning curve process again. So you found out about some teams. They developed some chemistry in the non-conference schedule. Um take a lot of underdogs, especially, you know, big boys playing, playing the little guys, you know, because a lot of these, these top 40 teams, you know, are, are, you know, messing around with their roster, their rotation in terms of players, whether, whether they play better small or they play better big or they play better with a combination of both, you know, you judge the guard play, you know, and so you, you, you kind of see teams develop a chemistry and create an identity in the non-conference season. And then when conference season starts, you know, 
they pretty much got their roster set. You, you pretty much, you know, what they're, you know, what's been successful for them. And then they start playing these conference games where teams know them very well. They know their personnel. Every opponent knows the other opponent inside and out. They know about the home court advantages. They know about the pitfalls of, you know, traveling to Manhattan, Kansas, or Morgantown, West Virginia, or, you know, some of these uh, tough-to-get-to, hard road trip, love it, Texas, you know, tough road trips, you know, that they, they know all about those, uh, you know, those, uh, those variances and, and how to adjust to them and prepare their team. So, you know, you don't have any more neutral floor games anymore. Um, which which is always a different dichotomy as well. So, you know, we're kind of in the midst of that. So, um, actually, we're kind of starting over here the last couple of weeks, and we've met with mixed results. Had a winning night last night, a couple of nights ago. You you know, you mentioned in your email the Big Twelve. You know, I took two Big Twelve road teams uh, that were both clearly better teams in Iowa State and Texas, and they both got beat. And they both were laying like two and a half. So. You know, um, you're learning as you go along here that home court obviously is a big deal, you know, for a lot of these teams. Kansas last night covering late, you know, and in a big, big game against TCU. Um, so, you know, that, that's kind of what we're in the midst of. And then when you get to the postseason, March Madness, NIT, NCAA tournaments, CIB, some of these other tournaments, you know, then, then you start handicapping a different way for those as well. We'll get back to college in a second, but I want to ask you about the NBA here for a minute because with the NBA starting earlier, uh, the league, you know, incorporating some more off days, things of that sort, pretty much all of the league's teams are around, you know, 40 or 42 or 43 games played right now. So we're already halfway through the NBA season. Are there any surprises so far for you? Is there anything that stands out that, you know, maybe you'll look to back or fade as we go throughout the second half of the year? Not really. Um, it's pretty much more the same in the NBA. It's relatively consistent. I think some of the rest time has helped. Um, but it, it's it, it, what it boils down to in the NBA, and I've said it on this show before, and I'll say it till I'm out of breath, you know, at the end of the day, it boils down to scheduling, scheduling spots, you know. Um, did they have a big game last night, you know, and now, now they're going on the road the next day. Boston-Miami game is a perfect example. Boston had a big win last night against a very good and defensively strong Indiana team. They put up a crap load of points in that game, which kind of surprised me, actually. Um, and, and so now they go on the road and they lay a short number and they look real attractive laying two and a half. You've got to be careful about back-to-back games and who they played the day before. I'm still uh, one of those guys that does a lot of fading of teams, even if they're good. We're on the third or fourth game in seven or eight days on these road trips. You know, they could be, you know, it could be uh, Boston going in on the West Coast to play Sacramento, you know, and they're on the fourth game in seven days on a West Coast road. They played the Golden State Warriors the day before. That's a huge fade spot for those teams. You know, once they get four or five games into a, a road trip, you know, you know, there's just different scheduling spots and stuff. I, I don't – nothing's really surprised me. I think really the only thing that has surprised me, I thought Golden State would be really dominant this year again, and they haven't been. You know, and we've and I've, I've taken to fade them quite a bit in games. And then, of course, there's other teams that I like to – you know, there's a couple of websites I use that, again, first half lines. You know, looking at teams, I had uh, the Clippers the other night – against uh, Charlotte, and, you know, I was looking at that game, and I really couldn't figure out where I wanted to lay the six and a half or seven, you know, although Charlotte was on their third road game in five days, you know, and there was a fade spot, but I, did, I, I felt that laying three at halftime was better than laying six and a half, seven was the closing line. Clippers ended up winning that when it covered, but, you know, then you go over and you start looking at some of these websites that are available, and the Los Angeles Clippers are the number one scoring team in the NBA in the first half, and Charlotte was ranked 21st. And you take the scheduling spot where they were at, and then you take those statistics right there, and uh, I got to lay a three-pointer. You know, I think they were up, I think, seven or eight at halftime. So, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's more of the same in handicap in the NBA. I mean, I haven't really had a lot of surprises this year. Maybe – 
Washington playing horrible, you know, a little bit. And now they lost, you know, they lost one of their – they lost Wall, but I thought they might play a lot better this year. They were – they're kind of a disappointment. And, and uh, of course, also, I think that, like I mentioned, Golden State just not playing that well. And, and uh, you know, I, it, it's – you know, it's 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 been a little hit and miss, you know, in the NBA for me this year. But we're up. I think we're up around sixty, almost sixty percent. So, you know, I'm pretty pleased with, with what I've seen and what I've done so far, Adam. All right, so let's move into college basketball. And by the way, for our listeners, Tony does have a, a play on Thunder and Spurs game tonight, premium play. I wanted to talk about that game, but uh, you know, with that play that he's got posted over there at Docs, we'll leave that one alone. Uh, But in college basketball, you you mentioned the Big 12 here, and and this is something I was looking at yesterday. Um, Everybody in the Big 12 already has a conference loss, except for Texas Tech. They have very good records for the season. Some of them played stronger schedules than others. But, you know, what's the deal with that? How come everybody's got a loss in conference already except for Texas Tech? Well, there's a lot of parity in this conference this year. There's a lot of really good teams. It doesn't surprise me you know, at all. Um, we mentioned Texas Tech, you know, there, here's a team that's, you know, 10-0 and at home, and and uh, they're 3-1 uh, and one on neutral sites. You know, they, they've got a lot, they're a 14-1 and one team. They're a very, very good basketball team this year. Defensively, they're very sound. You know, uh, they've got uh, in 15 line games they've played, they have 10 unders. You know, so they're just their defense gives people a lot of problems. They're extremely well coached. Um, you know, Kansas is about where I thought they were going to be. Um, again, Iowa State strong as hell at, at home. Um, already beat Kansas in there. Uh, anybody when you ever Iowa State's at home and you know they're catching any points against a strong team, you better look the frick out because they are just they're just like their football team. It's tough to go to Ames, Iowa in any sport and get a win, you know. Um, I think Texas is t- Texas is maybe a little bit overrated in the conference. I think TCU's a little better than Texas, and, and Texas had trouble the other night in their game. Um, the only team really I think that's been a surprise this year, and they did play a very tight game last night, was West Virginia. Uh, Huggy Bear there, he just he, they, they can't seem to get it together this year and, and maintain any sort of – rhythm and consistency from game to game and and I'm going to be looking to fade them in certain spots I mean that game was tight last night because Kansas State's offense is is a little bit limited but at at the end of the day you know I mentioned we were in the second season of the season so conference only had a couple of conference three conference games uh, in the uh, Big 12 so far so you're still kind of sorting it out a little bit but you know for the first uh, top eight teams there I don't think anybody's six or seven points better than any other team, Adam. It's going to be one of those conferences where you're just going to have to look and choose and and, and uh, pick your spots wisely this year. Well, and of course, we've talked about the home road dichotomy in the Big 12 and, and how that plays such a big role. But one of the things that I wanted to ask you about here, Tony, uh, you mentioned TCU and that loss to Kansas last night. Well, TCU's got another big game on deck here against an Oklahoma team in Norman that, you know, maybe a little bit overvalued being a ranked team right now because they've already lost two of three in conference play. But this is something that's now unique to conference play that a lot of teams didn't see in the non-conference playing back-to-back games against really good teams. So I think that's a spot in the Big 12 that's worth watching this year. Yes, it is. You know, definitely, like I said, you get these top, you know, six or seven teams, especially the top six, you know, and they're doing back to backs against uh, you know, you know, a ranked team and then another ranked team, and I, I do think maybe uh, uh, OU is a little, uh, a little overvalued. But at the end of the day, you know, going in and playing Kansas at Fog Allen and then going and playing another team, you know, on back to back scenarios are those are. All right, seems like we lost Tony George there. We'll try to get him back on the program. Uh, sounds like some sort of technical issue there with his phone or. You know, maybe it's uh, maybe it's on our end here, but we'll get him to call back in. Uh, that's the thing about the Big 12, you know, is that you, you will have one or two teams that probably rise to the top in that conference. But with how strong just about all of these teams are at home, you, know, you, you run into a lot of situational spots in that conference in terms of, you know, playing back to back tough road games or letdown spots. You know, how many times do we see teams at the bottom of the Big 12? 
come up and pull off one of those upsets, you know, because they catch a team in a bad spot. You know, maybe Kansas goes on the road to Oklahoma State and loses because they just played, you know, Texas and Texas Tech or something like that. So that will be a factor that you want to look for in the Big 12 to be sure as we go throughout the season here. And, you know, a lot of times these things do come up in conference play, even if it's a conference where teams aren't ranked, you know, where you don't have some of the top 25 teams, top 30 teams in the country. You know, when you go and play, you know, somebody who's the top team in your conference or the team that's expected to be the top team in your conference, you know, that's the team that has a sign on its back. That's the team that has the bullseye. That's the team that you want to look to go after. Well, maybe in your next game, you could have a little bit of a letdown. Or maybe in the game prior to that, you could have a little bit of a look-ahead situation. So those are things that definitely do happen across all of these conferences. That isn't just something exclusive to the Big 12 or the Big 10 or the Big East or something like that because you've got these name brand teams. You know, when it comes to college basketball, you have one objective. When you're a low major or a mid-major team, that's to win your conference because that's your ticket to getting into postseason play. That's your ticket to get into the into March Madness or, you know, if you're the regular season champ, get yourself into the NIT, CBI, CIT, something like that. So that means, you know, these teams that are expected to win these conferences they have a sign on their backs. You know, they are the hunted, literally and figuratively, in these conferences here. So that's definitely something that you want to look to try and take advantage of uh, in any conference, whether it's a major conference or not. You know, those teams that are expected to be at the top are the ones that do have a lot of challengers. As we go throughout the season, we'll bring Tony back on here. Tony, you there? Yeah, you dropped out for some reason. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened there, but, uh, you know, I, I was just kind of talking while I was uh, waiting for you to come back on the line here that, you know, when it comes to the Big 12, as bad as West Virginia is, as you know, not good as Oklahoma State has looked here so far, they're going to scalp some of these games against the top competitors in the Big 12 because of the scheduling spots you alluded to earlier. Yeah, that's it, it, scheduling spots is, abs- is, is crucial. Again, look at the last couple of games. You know, look look at the next couple of games on their advanced schedule. You know, um, there's spots like last night. I thought Kansas was in a great spot. Anytime Kansas is off a loss, you know, they're going to come out. They're going to kick somebody's ass the next game more more times than not. I don't care who it is, especially if they're playing a Fog Allen, you know. And also you take teams like Iowa State, which I, I drank the Kool-Aid on. I'm fully transparent. I thought they looked extremely good against a very good top five ranked Kansas team. And I thought they would go on the road and take care of business at Baylor, but you know they just they didn't they didn't have their moxie. They uh, maybe they were celebrating or what the case might have been. But scheduling in college basketball is absolutely crucial. You have to look back a couple, back a game and ahead a game when you're handicapping a basketball game because that does come into play. We'll touch on another one of the conferences that you know very well, the Missouri Valley. And and obviously we've talked about the home road dichotomy in that conference as well, but same thing as the big 12, everybody in this conference, except for Valparaiso has a conference loss already. Valpo, just their second year in the MVC last year, six and 12 in conference play this year. They're already halfway to that win total with three victories. Who can we trust in the Missouri Valley this year, Tony? Boy, I don't. You know what? I'm. I was. I was going to call you off there and ask you. Yeah, it, it has. It, it has been a uh, topsy turvy conference here um, all year long. You know, Loyola Chicago was expected to do well. Southern Illinois was one of the one of the teams that was expected to do well. Both those teams are nine and seven. Valpo at ten and six. They couldn't get out of their way last year. You know. Um, and, and of course, you've got let's see, you've got five teams here, two and one, and then Valpo at three and zero, oh, and then you've got Bradley, which is surprising. Uh, they're eight and eight. Northern Iowa six and ten. You know, um, uh, Drake is a team that you know their coach came up for Wichita State. Uh, we have been down there, and they were a team that really struggled last year. They were one of the few teams you could you could go against at home. And, and win, especially if you were laying six or under. They didn't have anything, and here they sit at twelve and four, uh, and they were just rolling along and you know kicking ass and taking names. And then they lose their point guard Norton, twelve points a game, but kind of the leader on the floor. 
and now they fade it. You know, and and he's out. He, he blew an ACL, so he's out for the year. You know, and so and that happened right when conference started. It's conference their conference uh, season started, and then they, you know, they were what were they eleven and one going into conference action, and now they're twelve and four, went one and two in conference action, and and uh, you know it's it's really uh, it's really a struggle here to get a clear cut favorite uh, in, in the Missouri Valley Conference right now. So with that being a conference where you feel like you specialize, what do you do in that scenario? I mean, are you just kind of taking a wait and see approach? Are you looking to play on home teams because we know that there's that big home road dichotomy? What, what are you looking to do with the Mo Valley right now? Well, you know, it, it, it totals some totals as well. Um, the totals have been a lot higher this year. You know, you take a look at Drake, you know, uh, their second in offense. Uh, in, in the Mo Valley, in terms of uh, points and offensive efficiency, and they're dead last in defense. So you get them playing Loyola, Southern Illinois, you know, Valpo, even Missouri State, who could put up some points. Uh, you're looking for totals plays right there. And I'm going to kind of mess around with totals plays and let things shake out here another week or two before I start making some side play moves here and, and see how things are going to shake out. Because, like, again, we're in the beginning of a brand new season. The teams react different to conference action. So in, in the interim, I found some uh, nice little spots to take some totals plays in there and kind of watch how some of these side plays shake out. Tony George, professional handicapper over at Doc Sports. What's going on over there right now, Tony? Well, we're on a nice little run in the NFL. And, of course, so we got a big top play this weekend on Saturday in the NFL, a 4-1 weekend. And, and uh and in college basketball, we've been very successful. I've got a professional better, and I'll call him a Vegas Sharp, for lack of a better term, a guy I've known for six or seven years out here that joined me for college basketball this year. And he throws in a few plays during the week. He's a low-volume guy like myself, Adam. But on the last, uh, we've been using his action on the weekends, 16-6 and uh, six, uh, against the spread the last five Saturdays in college basketball. We put out usually four, maybe five plays. On Saturday, we've been real successful on Saturday games, you know, and finding some spots. And, and so we've uh, rolled along college basketball and, and just get over there to Docs and uh, pick up a card. And of course, our NBA has been solid. We've got a, got a, it's a four unit play in the NBA tonight, the Spurs and Thunders game. But a couple of really good angles in that game. We're going to attack the books here tonight in that play. And, and of course, playoff card will be up. And don't forget, you could just check me out at YouTube. Um, every day I put out a free play. There's 60% over the last 15 months, and we document them every day for you. So get over to YouTube, just type in my name and Slice Stock Sports, and you can get a free video play. And we give everybody an update on what we're doing over there, Adam, and then, of course, uh, recap what we did the day before on a daily basis. So 100% transparency on those videos. Be sure and come over, subscribe, and check it out. Tony George, professional handicapper over at Doc Sports, at T George Sports on Twitter. Not sure how we got cut off, man, but thanks for calling back in to round out this segment. We'll talk to you again next week. Okay, buddy.